All right. Um, so I wasn't sure what I wanted to talk about uh, today. However, thinking back on some uh, discussions that I've had in the past week, um, I thought I would talk about the soul and the importance of um, knowing about your soul uh, and why it's so important. Um, because it's not something that most people think about. And it, it's it's interesting, and I understand. I understand it because at one point, I didn't think about it at all. You know, all I, all I knew was life here as I have always known it. You know, from a kid growing up and, and from history and, and things like that. I never really thought about the soul. It was so much uh, of a focus on just living life here in physical form. And the only thing that I was ever taught in terms of a soul um, had to do with religion and God. But that really wasn't too much part of my life and nobody really understood it. And so it just didn't have any significance um, for me. And for most people, actually, even if people belong to a religion, oh Lord Jesus, you move kind of slow. Um, even if people have a religion and they go to church, they're still not um, an understanding as to what it is. And it's interesting because last night I was watching a movie called Doctor Strange. And I uh, was watching it with someone who had never uh, seen the movie before. And so there were a lot of questions, right? And the reason why there were a lot of questions is because of the knowledge that I have regarding the soul and the spirit world and things like that. So, you know, as the person was asking the questions, it really dawned on me that people really don't have these answers. And they're questions that people generally have, but others really don't have the answers for them. So they don't ask the questions. It's, it's just, it's just, I don't know, it's just weird. But like for me, I don't really think about the things that people don't know because I know it, if that makes any sense. Like you don't, you don't think about what people don't know if you already know it because you start to believe and feel that it's just common knowledge. And there's one thing that I have to understand is that this is not common knowledge at all. So I wanted to talk about, you know, the, the soul and the importance of it <clears throat> um, and why you, if you're listening to this, should make it a number one priority because it will dictate, <clears throat> your soul dictates actually your experience here, but even more so it dictates your spirit, your experience in the spirit world. So yeah, we can focus on life here and go to college and, and get the career and, and, and make the money and have the house and the cars and, and the kids if that's what you desire, but what happens after that? <clears throat> nobody's preparing for that and it's it's alluded in in religions in terms of you know if you do good deeds here then you know you'll be rewarded in heaven or you know when you die and that's generally what people believe is that they'll go to heaven um so even even religions who believe it, it, here's the thing with religions religions believe that they are the right religion if they didn't believe that they wouldn't belong to it even though they say all religions are the same or we're all praying to the same God, there is a, a belief within them that is a belief that they have the right, like they belong to the right religion. If they didn't, they would go to any religion or they wouldn't believe, they wouldn't belong to any religion at all. If they truly believe that, so there's, there's this contradictory thing going on within uh, us as humans about what we believe we say one thing but we believe another and that was one example so everything that is within our soul is going to determine what we experience in what people call the afterlife or the other side of the veil um, I don't know what other things they call it but when we die what we experience is based on our soul and our soul alone. That's it. It doesn't have anything to do with our beliefs. It doesn't have anything to do with that at all. So if you have a religious belief that, why is it so hot in here? It's getting hot in here. Stay between the lines, Bradley. Um, if, see, 
I look. <laughs> Back to my old tricks, right? <laughs> Being distracted so easily. Um, so everything that, that we do here is going to, is, okay, let me just put it this way. Everything that we experience here and is locked within our soul is going to dictate what we experience when we die. And what we experience here, and let, let me be clear on this, because I can look at someone's life and they could be um, a very wealthy person. And if I believe that they are being rewarded for the good deeds and they're gonna go to heaven or some good place because they're experiencing a good life here, that can be very misleading because even though they may have the cars and the houses and you know jewelry and all these and be able to take trips all over the place, that doesn't mean that they're not experiencing pain. Most people don't see the pain because of this facade that we have. We protect that so that nobody can see that we are truly suffering. And the, the monetary things, that's something that people use to cover up the pain. So, and I'm not saying that all wealthy people are covering up pain. That's not what I'm saying. But they are addictions. And so everyone has pain. Everyone has grief that they are suppressing, even if they don't even know it's there. And the reason why they don't know it's there is because of all the things that surround them. They're able to use these things as addictions so that they don't focus on the pain that dwells within their soul. So it doesn't matter if you're... It, see, look, you can end up in the hells, the lower levels of the first dimension, I should say, um, if you're wealthy or if you're poor. You can have a mean, spiteful, rich person and you can have a mean, spiteful, poor person. The soul can be the same and still have different experiences. The thing is, what dictates what someone has or doesn't have is based on what they believe they're worthy of. But that doesn't mean that they were nice or not nice to people. And somehow people have this twisted view of, especially Christians, Jesus Christ, oh Lord, if, if they have, if they get a little something, they'll say, God has blessed me with this and God had nothing to do with it. God provided the uh, ability for you to create or not create, to have or not have, but God personally did not have a hand in you getting whatever it is that you got. And there's this twisted belief that if, if just, if a bill is paid, oh, God bless me or God's watching over me, or... Or if someone uh, has something taken away, then God took it away and God's punishing me. But that's not how it works. But it's this belief that there is this external source that's actually dictating your experience. But that goes against the law of free will. You are deciding. You, you have the, the free will to decide what you have and what you don't have. All right. Um... But it's not viewed like that. And this is the problem with accountability. The thing is, your soul is dictating what you experience, what you have, and what you don't have. <clears throat> that which dwells within your soul dictates whether you have a connection with God. And that's not the same thing as, I go to church and I talk to God, or I believe I'm talking to God. That's not the same thing, because the connection with God has to be emotional. It has to be a feeling from the soul. That's the only method that God communicates. So when you have prayers that go unanswered, well, it's because you were not praying from your soul. You were not praying from your heart. You were not attempting to communicate from that sincere place. Most people pray out of desperation, and they, they talk to God like they would talk to the next person, verbally or mentally with their mind, but God does not communicate with your mind. God communicates with your soul. And the mind and the soul are two completely different things. And you know this through experience. You can say, oh yeah, nothing's wrong. I, you know, I'm over it. But in your soul, you still hurt from whatever the person did to you. And so there's a contradiction there if you really look at it. And so there is a separation between the soul and the mind. 
And so it's very important to know what's within the soul. Because the soul governs everything in your life. All the positive experiences and all the negative experiences are based on your soul. So when things don't go your way, it's based on your soul. When things go your way, it's based on your soul. Everything is based on, around your soul. The universe responds to your soul. That's the way God created it. God created the universe to respond to his children. The children being the soul. Not the physical body, not the spirit body, but your soul. And in the movie, uh, Doctor Strange, uh, there was um, this, I don't know what you want to call, the bald-headed lady, I forget what they called her in the movie. But she was like this master. She was like beyond a master. But anyway, she was talking about the um, astral body which is the spirit, she was referring to the spirit body, but she also intertwined the soul with that. And they are two completely different things. And even religions, especially Christianity, they believe that your spirit is your soul. But that's not what it is. You have your soul and you have a spirit body. And so they believe that your spirit will go. And even if you look at their uh, pictorial illustrations, then you will see that there's a picture of a body, usually some kind of a glowing body spirit that's going up to heaven in the same form as your physical body, but that's just your spirit body. It's not even your soul, but they believe that it's one and the same and it's not. Um, and this is important to know. It's important to have this distinction because what you experience in the body that you're experiencing it in is just uh, like a robot, if you will, because the soul, excuse me, the soul has no arms and legs and, and any of these things. It doesn't have this. If it did, it wouldn't need the physical body and it wouldn't need the spirit body. So it uses these apparatuses, these robots, these whatever bodies to have an experience within the dimension that it's residing in. And so right now, we are residing within the physical, what we consider the physical. And without it, we couldn't be here. Just like spirits who have lived here now, they're, they, they've crossed over. They no longer have the physical body. So they can't interact with you like your neighbor can, who's still in a physical body. They need that, that uh, appendage, that specific appendage, to operate within the physical world. I'm not moving, I'm flying too fast. Um, so, and, and the same goes for us. We cannot exist in the spirit world without the spirit body, which we, which we do every night, by the way. And you can look at my sleep state video if you want. Um, so it's just important to know the differences. It's important to know what's within your soul. Um, and going back to how it dictates what we experience. Look, there are spirits. You can you look them up on YouTube. Spirits that that communicate through these mediums or channels, and they're they're literally speaking through these people, talking about their experiences in the spirit world. Well, you're gonna get there, so you might want to learn about it. It's like someone <clears throat> who never went to regular school. Right? They never went to grammar uh, I think it's called grammar school. Um, they never went to, you know, high school. And all of a sudden, they want to go to college because they see that everyone is, is having this experience um, in the world with jobs and careers and things like that. And they, they want to go get a degree, too, and something. Well, if you, didn't, if you didn't learn any of the things that you needed to learn to prepare yourself for college, then you're going to have a pretty hard time navigating once you get there. And there's no different... Um, there's no difference uh, with the spirit world. If you don't learn about it, you're going to be plenty lost when you get there. That's just the way it's going to happen. It's it's logic. If you don't prepare for something, you will not do well in it. Unless you are already gifted in that. Meaning that God has already imbued in your soul a gift that comes naturally. Like an artist. Someone who paints. Some people have to go to school in order to learn how to do that. And some people 
they just do it naturally. It's a God-given gift. It's just something that's part of your part of your personality that allows you to express this form naturally. You, there's no thinking involved. It's just you and the canvas making art, and people are wowed by it. So unless you have that, it's going to be very difficult for you. So I know. <clears throat> You know, when I was talking to the individual about, you know, about spirits, and they were really asking the questions. I wasn't prompting anything. But they were like, hey, so in the spirit world, X, Y, Z. In the spirit world, does this happen? Does that happen? Um, and so there was a natural curiosity. And it's interesting to see that because some people, they don't want to know. They don't want to know anything. <clears throat> and there's a, a pattern um, with the people who don't want to know. And generally, those people are fearful people. They are afraid of a lot. And more than anything, they're afraid of knowing what they're going to experience because they already know the things that they have done. Um, meaning they know the, the things that they have done that are not right. They have caused people pain. Um, they have taken advantage of people. They have hurt people. They've caused a great deal of pain. And so they know what they have done. Um, and that's the thing is we know when we do something right and when we do something wrong. <clears throat> we know when we hurt someone. Um, but generally our pride gets in the way and we don't apologize for it. We don't feel remorseful um, regarding that. So we know as human beings, we know when we have done something that we're not supposed to do. <clears throat> Even animals know <laughs> when they've done something they're not supposed to do. <laughs> you know? So... These people are very afraid to know what goes on or what to expect, you know, in, in the spirit world when they die. Um, because they, you know, and for other reasons too, like let's say they have lost someone, a family member, could be a mother, father, brother, sister, cousin, friend, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, if they have lost someone and they have a belief or idea that they're going to be in this great place, they don't want to know anything or hear anything that's contrary to that belief because they want to believe that they are okay, which which re, um, which confirms their belief for themselves. And this is themselves confirming for themselves that everything's going to be okay. So if they believe mom or dad is in a better place, then they believe that when they die, they'll be in a better place. So it's a bunch of denial that's happening. <clears throat> And this is one of the reasons why people don't want to know the truth. And that's fine because they're the ones who are going to have to pay for it. Nobody's going to have to pay for it. I'm not going to have to pay for it. People who know or want to know aren't going to have to pay for that. But the people who refuse to know, they're going to have to pay for that. And it's not, it's not the denial that they're paying for. It's not that act. It's just they are going to have a rude awakening because the truth will be prevented will be presented to them in a way that they won't be able to deny it, you know, and a lot of things will happen to these people when they get to the other side, because when they start to experience something other than what they expected to experience, they're going to get very angry, very angry, and a lot of them, not a lot of them, but I'm saying the ones that I interact with that deny what I'm talking about, they will hate me too. They'll blame me. But then these are the people who blamed everybody for their problems to begin with. Because if they had self-reflection, then they would be able to see themselves clearly and work on themselves and fix that which dwells within their soul. But because they don't want to do that, everybody else is a problem. So that's why, that's how I know I'll be blamed for it. And people do it all the time here. So who you are now is going to be who you are when you, when you pass on. <clears throat> so the same people that I stay away from that I know are toxic are going to be the same toxic people when they pass. That's just the way it is. I don't, I have no desire to be around these people. I have no desire to be around people who do, um, think or unloving things to someone else. So I typically stay away from them because I don't want that experience. Um, now if it presents itself to me, like the guy I was talking about yesterday, how he was he just wanted people who complained to just you know leave his Facebook. If 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 something is presenting itself to me, I, I stop. I'm like, okay, why are these people in my life all of a sudden? Like there's something going on with me that's attracting this. And this is an important thing to know 
is when you have an experience, and I talked about it yesterday, but it's, it's really important to know that when you experience something, there's a reason why. And that reason why is within you. And you have to ask yourself the question. You have to ask yourself any, anytime you experience something. Like when you, if someone gives you something, let's just say a stranger says, hey, you know, I have X, X, or X Y, and Z. Um, why is this biker all over the place? Like, get it together, brother. Um, if someone, like, for instance, maybe about a month ago, <clears throat> there were these people who went to this farmer's market. Lady, look, she's, she's acting silly back there. Um, they went to this farmer's market, and they're like, hey, you know, we have, you know, so much of this, and it was... You know, would you like some? And they had like pineapples and papaya and all this great stuff. And they didn't know me. It was just a, a guy and his daughter. And they're like, oh, here's a bag. They gave me this canvas bag. They're like, here, this is your bag. Go ahead and get what you want. Have you had this? Have this? And they were just giving me all kinds of stuff. And I was a little taken aback because I'm not used to people doing that. And so I had to ask myself, well, why is this happening? Well, you have to acknowledge the feelings that you're having, be, <clears throat> you're having, <laughs> that sounded weird, <laughs> having, um, the feelings that you're having from the experience, not just look at it intellectually, like, are you, what are you feeling, like, I felt, what, let me try to remember what I felt at the time, because it was, it was I was kind of taking it back, um, one, I don't, I don't experience people being so giving, um, so kind, um, and it also reminded me of the selfish people that have always surrounded me in my life and so that was a law of attraction to let me know hey there's something within you and see the law of attraction comes it's oh my god you know this law of attraction thing law of attraction brings you so many different messages in different ways they're not they're not all um negative and all good things shouldn't just be chalked up to being good and that's it like there's a message in that particular experience so even though this these people were giving me free fruits and vegetables which i love by the way it was like what was i feeling i mean because part of me that was like there's a certain part of me that is kind of sad that i didn't experience this as a as a kid for me to be shocked um or taken aback by this experience lets me know that this isn't the norm. So something else is the norm. And so that lets me know that there's still something within me that I have issues with that I don't even think about anymore, but it's but it came up in that moment, in that experience. And this is why it's so important to look at every single thing that you experience. Every single thing that you experience. So people look at, oh, I, uh, you know, someone gave me this, oh, how great, I'm happy, I'm joyful. And yes, you can live in that, live in that, and, and absorb that moment. But also ask, ask yourself, what else are you feeling from that? Don't just look at it for just the experience, but the emotions that's attached to it. Because every single thing that we experience, or I should say, we experience things for the emotions of it. That's what experiences are for, for the emotions of it. When we have something taken away we have an emotion attached to that and it's a painful one if a mother loses their child then they're going to have an emotion it's going to be a painful one but there is something attached to that that is a lesson and we have to ask ourselves what that is we have to be the ones to ask we are the beings the smart ones who are supposed to be able to look at a situation and determine what's going on or what's the reason behind it we have that ability, and but most of us don't use that. We just look at it, look at it as a painful experience, and then we stop there and live in the pain. But that's not that's not the point. And a mother never really loses her child. Um, the child, if if a parent loses their child here in physical form, the child is still alive in spirit form. She just can't see the child. But in her ignorance, she's going to feel like she has lost everything. But that's not the case. It's like the, the kid just being in the next room and she can't have access to it, but the kid is fine. The kid is uh, among other uh, celestial spirits, you know, so the, the kid is, is well taken care of. So, you know, there's, there's just a lot to know about who you are, where you are, how you operate, you know, how you function, the laws that govern your functioning, 
oh, there's so much, so much. Um, and I didn't know all of this. I, look, I wasn't born knowing all of this. <laughs> so, you know, some people look at it as, as it being too difficult to learn. Um, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go, crazy fool. Are you going or what? Um, fine, stay over there. I don't know what you're doing. And I don't think you know either. Oh, yeah. Woo. If you saw what I saw, <laughs> you would like, how come you're not taking an Uber? Um, so, anyway, it's just important to know about your soul because it governs everything. It governs the type of partner you attract. It, it governs the type, you know, it, it governs um the physical body of your children so when children are uh born with some kind of uh birth defect uh mental defect a, a physical defect it's based on the parents that's what it's based on and you can say it's vaccines you can say whatever it is but understand that that the vaccines are the law of attraction so there are parents who opt out of it. There are parents who opt in for it. Um, and there are parents who uh, opt out of the vaccines and, they, and their kids are still born with autism and, uh, and other different uh, defects or what we call defects. <clears throat> All of this is soul-based. All of it is soul-based. Um, so when you see uh, a wealthy family and they, they seem happy and they're always smiling but yet they have a child that has a, some type of birth defect well understand there's a lot that they're hiding that you don't see and like I said the money the cars the house all this stuff it's to cover it's it's just part of the illusion part of the facade <clears throat> so I mean we hold pain from our ancestors because they don't deal with it it passes on to our soul at conception so we have generations of crap that's stuck within us and it's the same stuff it's the same stuff passed on generation after generation after generation so it's it's not terribly difficult to figure out what it is if you can't look at your ancestors and find out what it is then look at yourself because you're experiencing the same stuff that they experience and that's the same like I was mentioning the family member that despise their mother. They experience the same things that their parents experience. So you don't have to look at your parents. You could just look at your life and try to find out what the heck's going on. <clears throat> because the same feelings that your ancestors had are the same feelings and emotions that you have. Because you have the same emotional injuries. It's not it's not difficult to find this stuff out. I think it's it's easier if you're able to use your parents experiences as a contrast meaning oh hold on oh look I'm experiencing what my my father experienced or I'm experiencing what my mother experienced if you can look at it like that then yeah it gives you a confirmation I should say it should give you confirmation but you don't need it like I can see things in my life that are happening and I can fix it on my own. I can get rid of the emotional injuries. And you know what they are because you feel this this um, pain. There's a sadness that's attached to it. And that's the part you have to acknowledge. But if you're always in denial and you're constantly saying that everything's all right, everything's okay, you're never gonna find it. One, because you're not humble enough to look at what's truly dwelling within you. If you can't be honest, with yourself and see what's within yourself how can you fix that which dwells within yourself how can you fix that you can't fix what you don't see and you can't fix what you don't want to see so it makes it difficult so you have to be humble and acknowledge the pain that dwells within you and that's not dwelling in the past that's not focusing on pain you know Abraham has people jacked up and living in denial big time because people don't want to look at the neg what they consider negative. They're like, that's negative, that's negative, that's negative. So they don't want to look at it. But, you know, 
be ready to get somebody. I uh, got my fast track, so you can keep your butt right there. <laughs> you waiting for him. Um, so, it's squeaky. Something squeaky. Here we go again. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> um, bum, bum, bum. Oh, Abraham Hicks. That's what I was saying. So, you know, this new age law of attraction, people are, people, look, I'm going to say it. If you are a follower of Abraham Hicks or any other kind of law of attraction person, they're messing you up big time. And you are going to pay for the things that you have accepted that they have given you. I'm just putting it out there like that. You have to look at the good and the bad and figure out what the bad is and get rid of that. You cannot ignore it. Just like you can't ignore your bills. They are there. They're not going anywhere. They're still there. You have to focus your attention on them and get rid of them. But most people don't know how to get rid of them, so they ignore them. And they just focus on the good stuff. And yeah, that'll work fine here. That'll work fine for you for a while here. That's fine. But you're going to you're gonna kick yourself in the, in the rear end when you get to the other side. Because all of that which you deny will hit you front and center. Head on, buddy. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So why not take the time while you're able to enjoy some of the great things that are here on earth and deal with your problems? Because you don't want to deal with your problems when you don't have any kind of positive anything surrounding you. You, you. you know, a crack addict cannot get well and find out what's wrong with them when they're surrounded by crack addicts. You cannot do that. So all this pain and suffering and misery that you're suppressing is going to dictate where you end up in the spirit world. And you're going to end up with people who are just like you with the same anger, the same pain, the same suffering. So how can you get out of that when everyone is the same as you? How can a depressed person get out of depression when they're surrounded by depressed people? You have to have a beacon of light and if you don't have that around you, it's going to be very difficult, which is why it's so important to work on this stuff now while you have so many people, beacons of light, to help you get out of whatever you're trying to get out of. So if you have suppressed pain, then you have people here to help you get out of it, then take advantage of that. Because you're not going to have it always. Once you leave this place, it's not going to be there for you. There is a way to get it, but you're not going to know how to get it. You're just not going to know. And when you're stuck in your pain, you're not, you're not, you're going to think all hope is lost. Which is why a lot of people stay in the first dimension, in the lower levels of the first dimension for, for hundreds and thousands of years. Because when you're experiencing pain, that's all you can focus on. You try to focus on something positive when all things are going badly. Even people on earth who have depression or everything's going like wrong in their life, they reach out for someone. There's something that they're able to grab a hold of and hold on. <clears throat> they're able to grab a hold of to pull them out of whatever they're stuck in. That's what happens. So there's a beacon of light. It doesn't matter if it's a message or it's actual words coming from someone. There is something that helped them get out of that place. So you understand that to, go, to get out of a dark place, you have to see some kind of light. You have to accept some kind of light. You have to hold on to that. That light. So, and it's interesting because I have a couple of friends who were um, experiencing this. They were just in a really dark place and everything was wrong. Everything was falling apart. And they couldn't get it together. And it was... It was the Facebook posts and, and communication, you know, with from others that they've known and myself giving, you know, positive encouragement saying, hey, you know, this is what's going on. This is how you can fix it. Or, you know, you look at it from this angle. And that's what helped them get out of it. They didn't do it solely on their own. They needed help. They didn't 
they were not producing their own light for themselves. So they had to use the light of another in order to have that glimpse of hope. <clears throat> because all I remember is them saying, I, you know, I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. I'm just, you know, I'm just sick of this, you know, this life sucks and I don't know why I'm here. Blah, 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 blah. Like it just went on and on and on. And that's my point is when you're in a dark place, that's all you can focus on. So when spirits cross over, or when someone dies and they're now, they have now arrived in the spirit world and they're in a dark place, do you think they're going to be like, oh, I need help. Help me get out of here. No, they're going to be focused on their darkness, on their current experience, which is what most people are doing right now, focusing on their current experience, not caring about anything else. So it's important to know what dwells within your soul. It's important to know that you can ask for help when you get there. If you so end up in a dark place, I'm not saying everyone's going to end up in a dark place, but a majority of people are going to end up in a dark place. You can see that by, I mean, you can just drive around town and look at the road rage. These people are angry. They are angry. You can, you can look at how a mother uh, spanks their children or inflicts pain upon their children. You can see it when people lie to one another. You can see when people manipulate. You can see it when people take advantage of. You see it all over the place. These are unloving things that are being acted out based on what's within their soul. So, when I say people are going to end up in the lower levels of the spirit world in a dark place, I'm not making it up. I'm just looking at the people interact with others. It's not difficult to, to see. You see it every day. You see it every single day. You argue uh, with, with people for no reason. You're mad at everybody because of what they have. I mean, there's jealousy. There's all kinds of feelings that folks have going on. <clears throat> and you think that stuff's going to be rewarded? <laughs> you need to rethink this. You really do. Uh, someone had posted something on Facebook this morning. I was like, I don't even know why this thing is circulating, but <laughs> I, I actually reposted it. Um, but I had a caption. Uh, I changed the caption of it. Um, but it was, it was saying something that you can be a kind, nice person and still tell someone to go fuck yourself. Um, excuse me, but would a kind, nice, loving person even say go fuck yourself? No. Not at all. So do you see how this delusion is like running rampant within the minds of these people? I mean, and they really, honestly, some people believe this. They believe that you can be a nice person and still tell someone to go kick rocks. I mean, really, they, some people believe that. They believe, well, hey, I don't, which is kind of like what that man was doing with his Facebook thing, um, saying that he doesn't, he doesn't want to experience this, so get away from me. Kick rocks. Bye. See ya. But I'm a nice, loving person. You're not nice and loving, so get out of here. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the way I see it is if someone is being unloving, then they have to be in a great deal of pain in order to do that. So I personally wouldn't tell someone to kick rocks. I would start having a dialogue with them like, hey, what's going on, you know? just have a conversation you know why why do you feel this way and allow these people to get it out because obviously they don't see it themselves so if you're a kind loving person do you just leave someone there to deal with their own problems on their own no nope all right but whatever all right have a good day everyone bye now